Hugo Pratt was born 1927 in Rimini in Italy, spent his childhood in Venice, his youth in North Africa and lived later on in Argentina for nearly 20 years. He was a true world citizen in a time when it wasn't yet hip to collect air miles and to spend your weekend in Dubai and Christmas on Hawaii. He spoke several languages and couldn't do anything with nationalist hubris of any kind. This is very probably directly connected to the dreamlike independence of Corto Maltese. It wasn't Pratt's only comic book, but it wasn't by far his most famous. In fact, these comics were always there, here in Germany. I remember that I saw them offered in bookshops, supermarkets and especially on flea markets. Quite often, right behind the omnipresent Asterix, Lucky Luke, Disney and Franco-Belgian comics. But for whatever reason I've never got into them. When I was a child they may had less appeal for me than the colorful comics I mentioned before. When I was older, I maybe just was too lazy to hunt down a decent Corto Maltese collection. But now IDW's special imprint Eurocomics published this nearly perfect new edition. Oversized, thick paper, very good printing quality. And right there I felt an itch that needs to be scratched. Of course, I tried to hunt down a collection of the old Maltese books with a German translation, but found them relatively pricey on eBay and other sources and obviously not as beautiful as these new IDW ones. It was just after I ordered the IDW books that I figured that a German publisher puts out a very decent new edition starting this year. And you can choose even between a black and white and a colored version. But anyway, I'm now on the IDW Maltese wagon, uh, wagon and there's no reason for me to jump off. Because these two books here are hardly to overtrump. They are the first two collections of a total of 12. Under the sign of Capricorn and Beyond the Windy Isles with several stories and adventures of Corto Maltese that add up to his Caribbean seat, all playing in different locations in the, of course, Caribbean era. Area? Area. Caribbean area. And you can, if you're so inclined, try to follow his roads on the old map reprints on the cover flaps. But again, as I said earlier, there is a dreamlike independence to Corto Maltese. As much as he doesn't belong to anyone but himself, the exact road of his journeys and adventures isn't always exactly to pin down. Sometimes he jumps several hundred miles from chapter to chapter without an explanation. There's a German word, Ortlosigkeit, meaning a certain independence from the setting. Though Pratt clearly delivers the atmosphere of the region, there is always a certain haziness to it. And you get, of course, the local personnel you may expect for stories that play out in the Caribbean region around the time of World War II, uh, World War I, of course. Voodoo priests and priestess, seekers for El Dorado, slave hunters, soldiers of fortune, amongst which Corto Maltese, Flotsam of the, the Far Away War, World War I, as I said, like for an instance that British deserter or the German as saboteur, etc. So a whole kaleidoscope of characters delivers adventures full of a very special atmosphere. As to the art, Pratt follows a very European tradition even though you can add some American comic artists like Frank Miller. The central idea maybe can be best described as less is sometimes more. So the Ligne Claire movement around Hergé 
tries to avoid too many lines and to condense as much as possible in one perfect line. Of course, you can, for an instance, add Charles M. Schulz with his peanuts into this line, Linie Claire tradition. But Pratt is no Linie Claire artist. He follows the less is sometimes more paradigma in a far more expressionistic fashion with stark contrasts between heavy black and fine lines. In this regard, he resembles very much one of my favorite painters, Emil Nolde, who was able to give you the outlines of his paintings and drawings in a very similar atmospheric, dramatic and sketchy fashion. And he shared uh, the fascination for southern seas and exotic characters with Hugo Pratt. And another similar artist that comes to my mind is um, the Espanol comic artist Munoz, or Munoz, which should be the topic of a future panology if I come to think of it. And um, my son uh, said it reminds him a bit of Jacques Tardy, which is obviously right. They have uh, something similar, something in common too, art-wise. So anyway, don't expect a spectacle on each page. In fact, there are sometimes a lot of talking heads over relatively long panel sequences. But hey, the way Pratt seems to throw these faces off the cuff onto the paper is a joy of its own, in my opinion. And as much as Pratt's, Pratt's drawings were fluid, almost like writing, you can experience the art almost as these drawings come into existence the moment you read them. I don't know if you understand what I want to say here. Hell, I'm not even certain if I understand myself. But anyway, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.